Hi everybody and welcome back to The Upper Room. This week we're talking about the Immaculate Conception. Now, a lot of people think that the Immaculate Conception is actually talking about Jesus. It's not. It's talking about Mary. The Catholic Church in its tradition has always taught that Mary was conceived without original sin. Lots of people have a problem with this. Uh, lots of Protestants, they don't understand it, mainly because um, they haven't, it, it hasn't been explained to them properly or they're unwilling to even listen to the facts. So, from Adam, God brought Eve from his body. And from Mary, God brought Christ from her body. From, from Adam came Eve, and from Mary came Christ. First in Corinthians, in First Corinthians, Saint Paul speaks of uh, all men dying through one perfect man, Adam, and all men, uh, all mankind, having salvation through one perfect man, Christ. Um, and so this makes Jesus the new Adam, and the original Adam, uh, the old Adam who said no to God, along with Eve. But Mary said yes to God and brought forth his son. So Mary is the new Eve of the redeemed. And Christ is the new Adam of the redeemed. So God made it so that Jesus died for Mary's sins uh, in the future. And, he, and God made it so when she was conceived that it held true for her in the past. And you will say, wait, hold on a second. How can that work? Well, Jesus was crucified on the cross and resurrected from the dead hundreds of years before you were born that are watching this video. Yet that sacrifice holds true for you now. God is outside of time and he can take events that happened to the in the past and can, can hold them true to events that are happening in the future. In this same way, he can take events that happened in the future to adhere to events that will happen in the past. Let me ask you a question, and I want you to think about this. Can God create another Adam and another Eve, separate from our world? Yes, there's nothing stopping him from doing that. He can do that. He can make another Adam and Eve without sin, somewhere else. But our parents, Adam and Eve, committed sin, and that sin has been passed down to all of us. So yes, God could start over somewhere else. He could. But we would be left here, and we would be subject to hell and the devil, because the devil made, uh, the devil tempted Eve, and Eve gave in and ate the fruit. So we would all belong to the devil. But God, being who he is, who is perfect righteousness, who is perfect justice, who is love, he cannot help himself. He has to do something. If he didn't do anything for us, he wouldn't be who he is. He cannot help himself because God is pure love. So God devised a plan to create a new Adam and a new Eve of the redeemed of this world. So whoever will be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Whoever would adhere to his rules and his commandments, whoever would obey his son and list follow his teachings, these would be saved. What does that say about those who aren't baptized? What does that say about those who don't follow his son, who don't follow his commands? God had to give us a chance. He had to give us an opportunity for all those who wanted his love, who wanted to live, who wants to be saved. And so God gives us the choice, live or die. The choice is ours. God is love. He can't make that decision for us. He, can't, he loves us too much. He leaves it in our hands to make the decision. He can't make the decision for us. So the Immaculate Conception is the story that Mary was conceived in the womb of her mother when Joachim and Anne had relations uh, as a married couple and she was conceived. And she was conceived without original sin. 
So God can create a new Adam or a new Eve, but God used his son's sacrifice on the cross to adhere to, the, to Mary's uh, conception um, before she was born, that she would be born without original sin so that God, his son, would have a perfectly clean vessel to enter the world. We, we are given original sin from our parents and their parents, from their parents and their parents. It's passed down through, through, through time, through our, through our parents. So Jesus had to come from a vessel, from Mary, who was without original sin to be a perfect sacrifice. And then people would say, well, how, how is it? Well, then why didn't Mary go to the cross? How come Mary couldn't have been crucified? That why didn't she die for our sins? Only Jesus is perfect in, 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 in all his goodness and righteousness. Yes, this is very true. Well, how? Well, Mary could not go to the cross because Mary is not divine. Jesus is fully God and fully man. Mary was only born without original sin. She is not divine. Catholics don't believe that. Catholics don't worship Mary. Catholics ask Mary to pray for her, for them. They don't worship her. They honor her. They adore her, and they and they and and they love her the way Christ loves her as his mother. So there are a few things that supported this um, idea. First of all, it was theological um, insight, which theologians were discussing and thinking about with direction of the Holy Spirit. And after they had created this dogma, when they realized. Um, and they were thinking, you know, hey, she was probably, you know, did not conceived without original sin. Then some time after that, uh, in Lord's Paris, the Virgin Mary appeared to a little girl named St. Bernadette. And the little girl asked her and she visited with her for 15 days. Now she's now the little girl's a saint. And there's a huge basilica built there in France called Lourdes, where there's a spring of water that has come up from the ground. That, that the Virgin Mary had told uh, St. Bernadette to dig and a, and a well springed up and, and people still go there today and experience miraculous healings when they enter the waters. When the Virgin Mary appeared to St. Bernadette, St. Bernadette didn't know who she was. She asked her, who are you? And she said, I am the Immaculate Conception. Later on, this happened for a number of days, 15 days. Um, and for, for 15 minutes out of 15 days, and only St. Bernadette could see her. It attracted tons of attention. The local newspapers and all kinds of people came out to see what the heck was going on in Lourdes. And finally, the police, the police investigated and spoke with St. Bernadette. They even tried to trip her up. They would ask her. They would say, so you said the virgin said this and that. And then Bernadette would say, no, -uh, I never said the virgin. I said, she said that her name was the Immaculate Conception. Then, after this event, sometime later, or before, I can't remember which, which one it is, St. Catherine Labor, she was a nun in France. She was, she was woken up one night in a dream by a, little, by a young boy who had brought her out to the living room or the area of their convent. There, she met with the Virgin Mary. And she had told her, I want you to have a medal struck. I want you to, to, and she gave her instructions on what should be on the medal. And, and on the medal is a picture of Mary. On the back is our symbols of an M with a crucifix above it and a bar through the M, which means to Jesus through Mary. And the stars around it represent the 12 tribes. And on the front is a picture of Mary. And around that picture, it says, O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to thee. So this idea, this dogma, was supported by saints, by the Virgin Mary herself, and by God himself when he told the serpent in Genesis in the beginning that because the serpent has done this, he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman. That word enmity, it means rivalry. Funny thing to place between the serpent and the old Eve who was already on the serpent's side. This must be the new Eve.
because the new Eve has to bring Christ into the world again. So in these days to come, the serpent seed will be against the seed of the woman, the new Eve, Mary's children. And by Mary, we will bring Christ back into the world. So thanks again for watching The Upper Room. I'm Jared. I'll see you again next week.